Hello, and welcome to UDK. In this tutorial, we will be building a simple door that responds to player movement and allows bots to pass through as well. Start by creating a scene from any of the basic map templates provided by UDK. And it's a good idea whenever you have a new level to click the down arrow in each viewport and go to show, reset to defaults. This allows anything that may have been hidden to come back. Click on the Builder Brush and holding down Control and dragging with the right mouse button, move it just in front of the initial block. And in the Volumes uh, menu on the left, click on Add Volume and go down to Trigger Volume. Click off the Builder Brush, hit B to hide it, and you'll see the green cube there is our first Trigger Volume. We're going to hook this up in, UD in Kismet now by clicking on the K with the tail on it that opens up Kismet and in Kismet we're interested in right clicking new event using trigger volume 0. Click on touch and we create our first event. An event starts off a sequence in Kismet. This is a trigger volume event and to be sure that it triggers multiple times rather than just once open the sequence event uh, property drop down and change max trigger count to 0. Now to give it a test, we can right click and add our first action in this sequence by going new action, misc, log, and logs just output text to the screen. And here we're going to write down a simple uh, test to make sure that everything is working and connect the touched of the trigger volume to the end of the log. Now hit F8 and when you go into the trigger volume, you'll see that it tr triggers multiple times. Next we want to add the door. So move the initial block to the right and holding down Alt, create a copy of it to create the hallway for our door. Now Control shift f brings up the content browser. Type in door and search by static meshes. I'm going to grab two meshes from here. First of all, the door frame. Highlight that right click where you want to add it, add recent, brings whatever you have highlighted, add a static mesh, and again highlight the doorway itself, right click, add recent, add static mesh actor, make sure it's placed where you want, and all we have to do to this to make it work with the animation is convert it from a static mesh to a, an active one called a mover. So right click and move down to the convert submenu and convert static mesh actor to mover. You can tell something's a mover because in the for view when you hit alt x and home you'll see that it's magenta. So static meshes are cyan and movers are magenta. Now one thing we have to add is the collision back into it. Anytime you convert something, uh, it loses its collision. So hit F4 to bring up the properties, and you'll see it says interp actor here. That's the same as a, a mover. Uh, we'll find out the difference, why it's called that in a second. They're the same name, though, for the same thing. Open up the collision uh, submenu, and in collision type, go to collide block all. Okay, now we're ready to hook this door up to our Kismet sequence. So bring Kismet back up and to the right of the log, right click and new matinee. Matinee is the animation editor. Double click on that and it brings up the uh, matinee timeline. If you click on the timeline and use the mouse wheel, you'll scroll out and see that this an first animation is five seconds. That's the default time, but we want it to only be a second. We want it to be a very quick door can scroll left and right uh, through the timeline if you wish and to the left here right click and add a new empty group and we'll call that door. Now what that does is it connects whatever you have highlighted in the world to your Kismet matinee node. Uh, right here we now have the door subgroup and if you double click on this it in fact highlights that exact door so we know that it's working the way we want it to. Okay, back in matinee, we want to animate a specific thing on this door, so right click again, and there's all sorts of different things you can animate, but we just are interested in its movement. So click on add new movement track, 
And when you do that, you'll see a yellow uh, square show up there and a red triangle at the zero mark. That's the first keyframe. Now down where the scrubber brush is, the black uh, brush, move it all the way to the end of your animation sequence and hit enter to add a new keyframe. That new keyframe is currently highlighted and adjust key movement indicates that when you move this mesh you're setting a new keyframe and the yellow line connecting them is UDK interpolating between the two keyframes hence the name interpolating actor or interp actor. So that's everything we need to do for the animation. Click the loop section button just to make sure that it is working the way we expect and click out of matinee. Now we just have to connect the log to the play of the matinee to play it. Now this log is not totally necessary but it's a good thing to keep around in case things break later so click the seek act log in the properties and uncheck output to screen. You can also move it up by holding down control and uh, moving it up there and connect the untouched of the trigger volume to the reverse of the matinee so that when the player or any actor leaves that area the door closes. All right, that's everything we have for our door. So let's give that a test and run up to it and see what happens. Yep, it's working as expected. Okay, last thing to do is add in a path node that allows us to, the bot, a bot to understand that this is a door and not just a wall. And we do that by adding a door marker. So control shift F one more time, but this time go into actor classes and find the drop down navigation menu, open that, and door marker is the first that appears. We'll put a door marker right in front, add door marker here, and if it says bad size, just move it up a little bit, and hit end to drop it down to the appropriate distance. Now we have to tell this door marker that what the actual door is, so hit F4 to bring up its properties, open up the door marker drop down, and we want to fill, uh, in my door, we want to fill this with the appropriate static mesh. To do that, lock these properties so that you can highlight something else. Highlight the door and click the green arrow which fills my door with whatever you currently have highlighted. That's all we have to do there. Last thing is to add a path node on the other side so that the bot can actually make it all the way through. So right click and down to add actor, add path node, and let's just hook up all the paths by building them one more time. We don't need to worry about the lighting. In order to test this with a bot, we have to be in the appropriate game type. We could do that by saving it, DM dash, or we can just go to the view, world properties, and open up the game type. And for now, the game type for Pi, which is play and editor, uh, we can set to UT Deathmatch. We should probably set the default game type as well just to stay consistent. UT Deathmatch is the same as typing, saving it as a DM dash. Okay, now with those two uh, final changes, hit F8 and move up to the door. To bring in a bot, hit the tilde sign, which is underneath the escape, to bring up the console and type in AddBots1. And a bot will appear and we'll be able to make it through the door.